Hey, hey, elites, how you doing? It's me, your boy Waddles. Welcome to a brand new series. Minecraft 1.16, big update, a big Minecraft update, lots to farm, lots to farm, new series. You see, it's all pretty simple. Today's video, this video right here, is part one of a potential brand new series, if you guys want to see it. In this video, we'll be checking out three simple 1.16 farms. The series will be all about 1.16 farms. More specifically, simple, must-have 1.16 farms. These are all designed for the nether update and up, and will help you get a lot of something. If you guys want to see this series continue, smash that like button on this video. If it passes 20k likes, I'll make a part two. And as always, remember to hit that subscribe button and turn notifications on for even more videos just like this one dropped right into your sub feed. Let's kick today's video off and really the whole series off with what is pretty much the easiest farm in the world. Take a look at this beast right here. Crazy complex, I know. This farm is a farm for all of those brand new nether plants. Want warped or crimson roots? No big deal. This is the farm for you. Maybe you're looking for a bunch of those cool fungi for those giant trees and the wood? Well, also not a big deal. This is the farm for you. To use this thing, simply walk up to it and hold down the mine button and you will start mining the nether plants. Give it a little bit of time and eventually you'll be stocked up with all of the new nether plants that you would ever want. Now this farm is not only for crimson plants, of course, it works with warped plants as well. Place a warped nylium right on top of it, hold down the mine button and boom, you're gonna get a bunch of the warped plants too, which is pretty cool. Of course, ideally, you'll wanna use this for the warped plants because uh, just straight up, they're better. They're much better than the crimson plants. Downside of this farm, it is a little bit noisy though. Let's Let's go ahead and turn this model off and check out the materials that you'll need to collect to build this farm. To build this farm, predictably, you're not going to need very many things. You'll need two observers, a single dispenser, a block of warp nylium or crimson nylium, and bone meal. Now when it comes to bone meal, you're probably going to want to have a, a lot of bone meal, probably more than a stack. If you use just a stack, it'll work, but it'll run out pretty quickly. So now the build. Start by placing a dispenser facing up. You can do this anywhere. Overworld, nether, doesn't matter. On top of that, place either a warped nylium or a crimson nylium. We're gonna go warped because team warped. So, so far, pretty complex. I know, hope I'm not going too fast. After that, place an observer right next to the dispenser facing out, and then another observer just like that. The dispenser will then begin rapidly firing. You see, these observers are detecting a block state change in each other. Each observer is turning on and off, and that's triggering the other observer to turn on and off. That's creating a repeat repeating signal in this dispenser. Now, if we load this dispenser up with bone meal, it will start using the bone meal, but only when there isn't a plant on top of this nylium. So if we check out the inside of the dispenser, all of those pulses are actually not using up our bone meal. That is good. Bone meal will only be used up when you dig the plant, when you mine the plant. And that's it. That is literally it. That's all you need to do to build this farm. Then stand next to the thing, hold down the mine button, and you'll collect all of the plants. Now, one little thing to note. If you're using this with warped plants, due to the nature of nether sprouts, you're going to need shears to harvest these things if you want them. If you don't care about nether sprouts, though, then don't worry about it. Just aim a little bit lower so you can dig out those nether sprouts. They are very, very short. Due to this farm's design, it is perfect for AFKing, but if you're going to AFK around it, I recommend placing some building blocks around the farm so you end up picking up all of the drops. But that is farm number one. Now, let's get a little bit more advanced for farm number two. Farm number two. Now to lead into this farm, I've got to ask you a few questions. Do you have a nether hub or a nether base in or near a basalt deltas biome? Are you in the nether a lot in a basalt deltas biome? Or do you want an automatic source of magma creams for magma blocks or fire resistance potions? Well, if the answer is yes to any of those questions, then this is the farm for you. Farm number two is an automatic magma cube, magma cream farm. Now the farm itself looks and actually is pretty simple to build, but there are definitely some things that you're going to want to know about building this farm, such as where to build it. Because of the design of this farm, this thing will automatically draw all the magma cubes that spawn or wander near this thing to the cactus, and then the cactus will take out all of the magma creams for you. The iron golem will help a little bit too, if you can reach. Set this boy up in a basalt deltas biome that you're near pretty often and wait. Come back to it after a little while, check the chest, and maybe, just maybe, you'll find some magma creams inside of that chest waiting for you. Now, let's talk materials. What do you need to build this farm? Well, materials, again, they're going to be pretty simple. You don't need very much items at all. These are the items that are required for this build. Now, the slab can be any slab, the fences can be any fences, or you could use wall blocks as well. So, like a blackstone wall, that'll be golden. We're going to talk about it a little bit more, but you may also want to have more hoppers, but uh, more on that in a minute. This basalt block symbolizes the biome that you're going to need to build this one in. You will need to build this in a basalt deltas biome. 
Now location is actually everything with this farm. The Basalt Deltas biome is definitely a difficult biome to work with. Ideally, if you're looking for good rates with this farm, you're going to need a very specific type of location. First off, ideally build this farm in a Basalt Deltas biome that is near a lava ocean. If you have a lava ocean, hostile mob spawns will be cut way, way down. To better explain what I mean by this, imagine this lava ocean as maybe a crimson forest or a soul sand valley. If this lava ocean were either of those two biomes, we would have a lot of other hostile mobs in here, thus cutting down the magma cube spawn rates and slowing down the farm. So ideally, a basalt deltas biome near a lava ocean, but if you don't have one of those, that's fine, it's not that big of a deal. The thing that's definitely a little bit more important about this farm's build location is the terrain itself. So check out this area over here, it's relatively flat and open. Ideally, you want to build this farm in an area that is even more flat and even more open than this spot right here. Realistically, achieving this will probably require some mining, because the basalt deltas biome is usually pretty mountainous. If you're looking for good rates, it would be a pretty good idea to just clear out an area inside of the basalt deltas biome flatten it all out get rid of the lava put spawnable blocks on the ground something like basalt would be perfect and hey uh look at that there's a lot of extra basalt here so again, ideally, you're going to want to build this farm in an area that is even more flat and even more open than this spot right here, but this is just an example, so it doesn't really matter. To build the farm, start by placing a chest in the ground. Now, going into that chest, place a hopper. Right next to that hopper, place a sand block. This is where we're going to plant the cactus. Then, all the way around that sand block, place even more hoppers. Make sure the hoppers all connect to each other so your drops actually are moved into the chest. You can test this by dropping something in a back hopper, giving it a second, and checking the chest. If that item is in the chest, your hoppers are good to go. So after that, you should have something that looks like this. Next, we're going to need our cactus. If you have three cactus, place three right on top of each other. If you only have one, place one and then wait for it to grow. After that, temporary block right here, maybe something like basalt, and then a slab. Then go ahead and get rid of that temporary block. You don't need it anymore. Now after that, on top of the slab, temporary block, temporary block. Then all the way around that top temporary block, fences or walls, something that's going to hold your iron golem in, but not be too gigantic. I think technically you could probably use glass panes as well if that's the aesthetic that you're going for. Iron bars would definitely work too. But now we have something that looks like this. Finally, we need an iron golem inside of this thing. So place a temporary block right in the middle, then an iron block right on top of it. Then go ahead and remove that temporary block. Now, just make an iron golem, just like that, and boom, the golem will fall right into that area. Now, if we have a magma cube that wanders near this farm, it is going to try and attack the iron golem because these creatures hate iron golems. But magma cubes, they've got a square, smooth brain. They're not very smart. They're going to try and jump at the iron golem and hit the cactus, and the cactus is going to take them out. The iron golem can also actually reach magma cubes from time to time and we'll take them out too. With the iron golem trapped inside of this little cage up here, it's gonna be safe. Nothing will hurt this guy. It should exist here forever. And then these cacti down here, uh, they're gonna be good too. As long as you don't place any blocks next to this thing, they will never break either. And so, technically, that is actually the whole farm itself, but there is one more thing that you should know. With the hopper set up like this, sometimes some magma creams will actually be lost. Check out this one right here. It landed past the hoppers. Because this is past the hoppers, obviously, it's just going to eventually despawn. Getting around the magma cream loss is easy, but potentially expensive if you don't have an iron farm. To get around that magma cream loss, place another row of hoppers around your first row of hoppers. Now, yes, this is going to start to get a little bit more expensive, but like I said, if you have an iron farm, it won't be that big of a deal. It is technically not necessary, though. But that right there is a pretty simple magma cream farm. If you set this boy up in an ideal location and hang around it, the rates actually shouldn't be too bad. Keep in mind that there are definitely better magma cream farms out there. They do require a little bit more effort, though. Ah, finally, farm number three. Last but not least, I actually had a lot of fun designing this farm. Now, big warning, this farm is very, very noisy. So, are you doing some sort of build and need a lot of Nylium for some reason? If the answer is yes, this is the farm for you. This right here is an automatic Nylium creation machine. Now, with some simple expansions, some simple additions, you can make this farm really, really big. You could set this farm up so you could easily create something like 10 stacks of Nylium very, very efficiently and very, very quickly. But at the same time, on that scale, you're going to need a whole lot more materials. So again, excuse the noise, but this thing over here is the farm itself. If we go over here, we can actually just turn the farm off. We don't need that right now. And over here is all of the Nylium that we created for ourselves. This farm, how I set it up, is actually just about full, just for running it for that short amount of time. Run this farm for a little while and you'll have a bunch of Nylium. Come back over to it with the Soak Touch pickaxe and you'll be able to collect it all. 
Of course, this farm is going to work for the generation of Warp Nylium as well as Crimson Nylium. The mechanics behind both of these blocks are exactly the same. So, materials, what do you need to build this Nylium generator? Well, this time around, you are going to need a little bit more materials. Inside of this chest are all of the materials that you're going to need in exact amounts. Now, if you want Warp Nylium, you'll need two blocks of Warp Nylium. If you want Crimson Nylium, two blocks of Crimson Nylium. Pretty straightforward. This slab, any slab will do. You could use a stone slab, a wood slab, a crimson slab, doesn't matter at all. These are just building blocks right here. Any building blocks will do as long as you can place redstone dust on top of them. Now in the middle of the chest in not exact amounts, bone meal. You're probably going to want to have a lot of bone meal and nether rack. For every block of nylium that you're going to want, you're going to need one nether rack block. We will be turning all of the nether rack into nylium. So if you want three stacks of nylium, you'll need three stacks of nether rack. Then finally, at the bottom of this chest are the ingredients for a smart piston. Now, you will need at least one smart piston with this farm, but you can set up more. If you want, like, a bunch of stacks of Nylium, maybe do, like, six or seven smart pistons right next to each other. If you want, maybe, let's say, seven smart pistons, multiply these materials in the bottom row by seven. So, seven redstone dust, seven building blocks. Again, it doesn't have to be smooth quartz, and so on. And also, don't forget a Silk Touch pickaxe. If you want Nylium, you need Silk Touch. Now ideally, when setting up this farm, you're going to want to have some room, so set it up in an area that has space. Start by placing a dispenser on the ground facing up into the air. Right next to that dispenser, diagonally place a sticky piston facing towards the side. Now on the block that the sticky piston is facing, place an observer facing away from the dispenser, so you have this right here. Finally, place another observer facing that other observer. Then place a lever on the back of the sticky piston and power it. That's going to turn this whole thing off so we don't have a bunch of noise constantly. Uh, basically good. Next, we're going to need a way to move the Nylium out of this farm that is going to be created inside of this farm. Place a temporary block on top of the sticky piston, then place a normal piston right next to it diagonally up in front of the observer. So right there just like that. Finally, to finish this part of the farm, we're going to need to run a wire from the back of this observer over to this piston right here. So place some building blocks just like that, and then six redstone dust on top of all of those building blocks, and you're good to go. Now if we turn this lever off on the sticky piston, uh, this is going to happen. That is exactly what we want. So far, so good. Now we can go ahead and turn that right back off. We don't need all that noise. So this is what we currently have. It looks confusing, but it's actually not that bad. Next up, we're going to want our Nylium, either Warped or Crimson Nylium. Place a temporary block on top of the dispenser, then Warp Nylium, Warp Nylium, or Crimson Nylium, Crimson Nylium. The Nylium that we place right here is going to be our Source Nylium, basically the Nylium that always exists that allows the Netherrack to turn into more Nylium. Now we're gonna need a block to stop us from getting too close to this thing so it can actually function. To do that, place a temporary block on top of the piston and then a half slab on the top half of the block right there just like that. It needs to be on the top half of the block. If you place it lower, Nylium actually won't be able to grow. Finally, inside of your dispenser, place a bunch of bone meal. You will need one piece of bone meal for each piece of Nylium. And so that is actually the farm itself, pretty simple, but actually, no it's not. You are going to want to set up at least one smart piston on this farm to get the timing just right. In its current state, this farm is actually going to move way too fast for Nylium to actually grow. The smart piston will slow it down a little bit. So now it's smart piston time. You do technically have some options when it comes to your smart piston. If you'd like your blocks to be pushed out that way, then you're gonna wanna orient your smart piston facing that way. If you want your blocks to be pushed this way, then you can do it that way too. Either way is fine. Either way though, go ahead and start by placing three temporary blocks coming off of your farm just like that. Then remove this and remove this. We don't need those. After that, place a note block right on top of your temporary block. Next up, after that, we're going to need an observer looking at that note block, and then a temporary block, temporary block, remove the middle one, and a piston facing towards that first temporary block, this one right here. Finally, right here, we're going to want a piece of redstone dust right behind the observer, so something just like that. Now, this right here is a smart piston. When there's a new block below a note block, the note block actually updates. The observer sees that, powers this little redstone dust, the redstone dust powers the block, and the piston fires. So, what does that all mean? Well, to show what that means, we're actually going to need to use the farm. So this lever right here on the back of the sticky piston is the on-off switch. To use it, first, of course, turn the farm on. Then walk up onto the farm itself and stand against this slab. Then, finally, with netherrack in your hand, hold down the use button. The first three netherrack are going to always be netherrack, but after that, you're going to start getting Nylium. 
It's a little tricky to show off, but as soon as blocks are moved underneath this piston and the note block is updated, all of the blocks will actually be pushed out this way. So these three netherrack right here in the beginning, those are the first netherrack that we placed down. After that, all of the crimson ilium that we had. Then, down here we have even more blank netherrack because our smart piston ran out. The smart piston circuit actually slows things down to the perfect speed for nylium to be formed. Now pistons can only move so many blocks, so once we have this many blocks in front of the piston, that piston is basically going to be shut off and all of the other blocks will continue to be pushed right through the circuit right here, over to this side. If we had more smart pistons set up over here, row number two would start to fill up and then row number three and four and five and however many rows you set up. If we want to talk exact numbers, a piston can move up to 12 blocks. 13 blocks? Impossible. So over here, I have six smart pistons. This farm, in its current form, will be able to produce about six rows of warp nylon before shutting off. Six rows of 13, six times 13, is 78. But we're going to need to minus those first three blocks, so that means 75 nylon blocks from this farm at a time. So long story short, if you want more Nylium, set up more Smart Pistons. Once you're done with Warp Nylium and you've decided you want Crimson Nylium, simply switch these two Warp Nylium blocks right here out for Crimson Nylium blocks and then use the farm. And so that is how you build a Warp Nylium farm and that is farm number three for this video. And boom, if you've been keeping track, if you can count, that has been three Minecraft 1.16 farms. So, that means it's the end of the video. Do you want to see more farms? If you do, remember to smash that like button. We've got a like goal of 20k likes. Down in the description are the links to all of my things, like my subreddit, my Instagram, my Twitter. Check them out. Drop a follow. Today, big shout out to my patron, Neve. Thank you so much for the support. If you haven't subscribed yet, change that today. Hit that bell as well so you get a notification every single day when I post. And until next time, stay fresh. It's been me, your boy Waddles. Goodbye, everyone.